In this video I'm going to show you how to paint a rusty metal weapon with the help of contrast paints. I started with a black primer on the weapon. You can use any primer you got at home or you'd like to use. Then we use some type of corrosion. For toughest corrosion, please do use an older brush for that you don't need to be that precise with it. Um, because in toughest corrosion there are some parts, some kind of sand, you don't want to use your expensive brush on that. With the typhus corrosion we just step in, we step on the not sharp part of the plate to get some texture on it. Just put it on there. We'll overpaint that in the next step. Then give it a, let it dry. It takes a couple of minutes. You see, just on the not sharpened part. So only on the flat part of the blade, like there. Once the tapas corrosion is dry, we are going to use lead belcher all over the weapon. I'm washing the whole metal with some nun oil, but any black wash or dark wash will do the job. Now we are using the contrast paints. For this, I'm using Gokron the fur. Skeleton Horde and Griffon Orange. Contrast paints are a pretty good and easy way to apply weathering effects on your model, especially here on the weapon. This corroded and older metal. So we're now applying some Gorkron the fur on the flat paint, uh, the flat part the weapon. Don't be afraid of touching it, I mean the model, and just step on some parts of the blade, not all of it, and on the back of the blade. You don't have to be that precise with it. Skeleton Horde. You can put more of this on it because it's not that strong. With the contrast paint, because they're very translucent, still a lot of the metal parts shine through. Then for a little bit of rust tone, I'm using the Griffhound Orange. They don't need much, you just dip it on as well in some parts. I'm also wiping it a little bit with a finger. When the contrast paints are dry, it looks something like this. And now we're going to dry brush some highlights on it. I'm using Citadel's Runfang Steel for that, but any kind of a little bit brighter metal or silver tone will do it. Then 
and I'm just dry brushing the edges of the weapon. You don't have to dry brush all of them, only there where you think the blade should be very sharp or should have some should have uh, contact with other weapons where they fight. Also on these edges here. Also go a little bit over the blade. But only a little. And where the, where the blade should be very sharp, I mean on the top, especially there, you, there you can go a little bit more heavy on it. I mean for a really quick paint job you could leave it like that. Would be tabletop ready in my opinion. But we're going to push it a little bit more. Every step which is following now. You don't have to do it, it's optional, but um, you can get pretty cool results from it. Now we're going to edge highlight, so you only use the first third of the brush and only with the side. You don't have to be too precise on it, because everywhere where the, uh, the paint or the, the weapon on the edge get a little bit more paint on it, it looks like scratches and a little bit more sharper, so don't be afraid of that. I'm also going to highlight the upper part of the weapon, in this case, I mean this is an arc blade, it is rougher and has more edges than a normal blade. Oh, that was a little bit too much. After we set up the highlights, it'll look something like that. But you can even go a little bit further, what we are going to do here. I'm using a very bright silver tone. This is silver from Vallejo. You could also use, for example, from uh, Games Workshop, Stormhouse Silver. It's not that bright, but bright enough. And I'm only going to place some little highlights on the sharpest points of the blade. For me that will be over there. You can also do some scratches on the blade and just use that, that silver tone and put some fine lines on the blade. To push it a little bit further. I'm going to show you something. For that you need a black. I'm using black negro. From Vallejo, but actually you can use any kind of blade you'd like. <clears throat> and what we're going to do here, we're putting a black line between the rust and that 
silver line there because a highlight always comes out a little bit stronger when there's a black line next to it. Here you need to be very precise. And as the other steps, this is optional. I actually don't recommend this step if you're a total beginner. But if you dare to do it, it looks pretty cool. The last step <clears throat> is optional as well, but pretty cool effect. Um, I'm using pigments for this. This is Light Rust from AK Interactive. Actually, you could use any kind of pigment um, which has a, a brown orange tone. For that, I'm using an old brush. Just put a little bit on the brush, then dip it on the weapon. Again, only on the part behind, uh, on the flat part of the weapon. And then you can just wipe it a little bit with your finger. Be careful that you don't put too much on it. And it will ruin your paint job. <clears throat> And there you go, that's the finished weapon. This will took you about 15 minutes. And for a weapon I think that's totally okay. Those weapons are one of those parts um, which are eye catchers. So. Thanks for watching guys, please consider subscribing if you want to see more tutorials in the future, hit the like button if you liked the video and we see you the next time, goodbye.